should say that uh, this program you can get to see and many of our other programs we're uploading it on the website and the website is http colon double backslash sites s-i-t-e-s so that's plural dot google dot com slash site singular slash poka lainui and you'll find many of our programs and uh, if you would like to rehear some of our broadcasts or you would like to share some of these radio programs with others uh, perhaps in America or other places then you can direct them to this uh, program you will see uh, this guy who tends to look like me <laughs> on the television and that's all you see just a one uh, bullet head guy talking on the microphone and trying to listen to your telephone calls our telephone number here is five two four ten eighty just before getting into uh, the news I was uh, uh, listening to Michael who talked about uh, his concern about uh, education itself and how it tends to dumb down the general population and as he spoke and he made uh, three particular co comments that what education builds itself around in the US is punctuality uh, to learn to perform repetitive monotonous task and to uh, respect uh, arbitrary authority uh, to be or to go along sort of with a program and uh, that brings about the real lack of awareness and lack of I would suggest the term is intellectuality to really discuss to analyze and to uh, be a little bit more complex in the way life uh, is or the way life should be is the education system really an education system or is it is it just a system to train one to uh, be an automaton is a society better if it is essentially one that is effective in meeting the industrial uh, purposes of filling in the job requirement or is a society actually better if the workers are not merely automatons but spend critical thinking and analysis and uh, even objection and challenging others as they go through their life cycle and some people could say well too much of one or the other may not be good for the health of a nation and I would suggest that that answer is appropriate depending on what position you may have in the society if you're sitting on someone and you want that person just to stay still so that you're sitting on him he becomes a good chair that doesn't move around and disrupt things then that's an appropriate point of view that they shouldn't be too thoughtful they should just perform their function of being a nice seat but if you're on the bottom side <laughs> you may somehow get a little bit tired of it over a period of time and say well is this really what the society is can't we take turns sitting on one another if there has to be a sitting on one another or shall we uh, try to create different relationships among ourselves that we can be self-critical and critical of one another and uh, see if we can relate in a better way by doing life that way I believe that it's in essence a philosophical approach as to what forms a character the foundation of a country and some people believe that well country is really run not by philosophy but by businesses and it is business that gives you the soul of a country and so anything that supports good strong business is what the country should be directed to other people are saying well that's one kind of country if you really like that kind of country or homeland or nation or whatever you call it but some people may enjoy a different kind of a society 
where there is greater equality and there is greater participation and where people are respected for their individuality, for their thoughtfulness, for their humanity and not just for their economic factor that they can be equated to as being an A plus employee or an A or B, C, D or a failure or an unemployed person. We need to see individuals as human beings, as individuals, and not just merely as economic factors. And I dare say that uh, as one looks at more generally the Republicans and the Democrats, you would have <laughs> an association, association of those who would like to see a country as merely a business on the Republican side and on the Democrat side, more uh, liberal uh, uh, people who would like to think about things. Now, not necessarily all are in this way you have uh, you know variations so uh, that's the way I see the underlying the broader question and part of that question uh, comes in terms of class structure because what happens is people without thinking about it places themselves and others within a particular class structure. They are either the automatons who have these blue-collar jobs or uh, brown-collar jobs or even some of the white-collar jobs, but they are not paid to think. They are paid to listen and to do. They are not paid to be philosophers. They are not paid to be analysts. They are paid for their employment of showing up punctuality, showing up at a particular time to listen to authority, don't question authority, and to especially perform <laughs> repetitive <laughs> services. Not much intellectuality. And for purposes of meeting their soul needs, their substitute, poetry or beautiful songs, but don't think too deeply about these things. Just be soothed at your soul level and then next morning get back to work and don't think too much, okay? Thinking can be dangerous. That's one group of people who fall within one aspect of the class. Other people are saying, no, 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 that's not for me. I may have to feed myself and my family, and I may have to give in to that uh, employment structure. So, yeah, I got to go along to a certain extent with being the economic factor in some uh, industrial formula. But you're not going to take my brain away. You're not going to take my willingness to challenge authority away until one gets caught up in a mortgage. The great theft of independent thinking. Yeah. So when you dare to speak up as, let's say, a school teacher and you have threatened your job and you remember, ah, my mortgage, how am I going to pay my mortgage? Or others who then become so locked in that they need to ask themselves, where will I get medical insurance for my family and for myself if I make too much noise? So now you have these things that dumb you down. It takes away the real soul of that individual. It robs you and it enslaves you using different methods of enslavement. So sometimes we say that, well, this is the way things are. This is what I've learned through this education system. But it's... Uh, is it really an education system or is it an enslavement system that does not really gives you the opportunity to soar into your views, your visions, your dreams, your deep underlying feelings of what 
relationship should be to your sense of God, your sense of self, your sense of the outer environment, whether it is family or the natural environment. Don't think about these things. Don't listen to Poka's radio show. <laughs> it will just poison your mind. <laughs> And others are saying, well, at least he brings in some relief. Even though he only reads articles to me, at least I'm getting <laughs> to understand some of the issues of the day. Okay. Well, I want to thank uh, the last caller for calling in and uh, posing this uh, deeper question, looking below the surface of uh, why people are not looking at such things as war in Iraq and uh, inhumanity that continues to go on. Telephone number here, 524-1080. And thank you all for uh, listening to my, uh, what do you call it, uh, soapboxing. Okay, let's go to our telephone. Aloha caller, welcome to the program. I can't hear you, Poker. Oh, okay. Hello? Yes, go ahead. Uh, you're on the line. Well, I'll have to turn the radio on. No, I'll just have okay. to talk because you get that feedback, but I can hardly hear uh, okay. you. Okay, I'll try to speak as loudly as I can. Well, um, certainly I certainly agree with the previous caller's um, analysis of what's going on in the educational system. Uh, and that, to me, is part, the educational system is part of the nail in the coffin, along with the other three <clears throat> that I told you about, about uh, m no money, for, no jobs for the middle class, and no health for the uh, elderly. Um, now, and now I feel of a fourth nail, and that's the taking away of population control. Because if we look at China, mm -hmm. uh, which is coming up out of being a third world, it took it, and it's been an agonizing trip because they control their population by really uh, limiting the family to one, as we all know. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that is what helped, that's one of the things that helped them bring, uh, bring them people up into the middle class. And also, they are being industrialized. So you see the same kind of uh, workshop, working shops that we had in the 20s. Remember all those, yes. that big fire and all that for the women working? Right. Uh -huh. In the sewing machine factories. Now you see that in China, at least on the television we see it. And so I think this is all in the line of making the U.S. a third world nation. And all of this, the support of uh, democracy and essentially the middle class have been, are being destroyed, if not already, by the uh, right wing. So, um, that's about all I can think of right now, but I'll come up with more later. Okay. I'm sorry you can't hear me because uh, every, every time I want to respond, it's difficult for you. Well, what I'll do, Polka, uh -huh. is uh, I'll listen to you and hang on okay. and then try to respond. Okay. Well, uh, right now I don't know what else to say to you. <laughs> what was that? In fact, right now I don't know what to respond to you. I oh. think what you were talking about was sweatshops. That's going on in China. Well, you can see the rise of industrialization yes. that way, uh, bringing the people up from the, the third world condition into the middle class. While our uh, manufacturing isn't even discussed any longer, all it now is is small businesses, and they don't create a, a great deal of jobs, and they mm -hmm. weren't the main uh, source of uh, bringing people up from the third world. And China now uh, has industrialization going, and our, our manufacturing going, and our is gone. Well, I thought there was some hope in what you were saying about uh, more agrarian uh, culture, which I think is what you're talking about, which would help the individualization arise um, or be recognized. Um, mm -hmm. The commodification of corn and uh, soybeans has pretty much uh, gutted the farmlands. So that's about yeah. where we are, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think we have pushed uh, some aspects of nature so far that in doing so we have destroyed nature itself. Later on, oh, yeah. uh, we will talk a little bit more about the GMO and what's happened in uh, Brazil and uh, how the government itself is turning around against GMO and taking a different position. But thank you very much for your call. 
Take care. Aloha. And if you would like to call, our telephone number is 524 524- 1080. We'll put you on the radio and uh, see what you have to say about some of these matters. With regards to, uh, are we then talking about a different economic basis for countries from moving from or choosing between an agrarian uh, economic model as opposed to a more industrialized model. And what is the difference between the two? Can you industrialize agriculture? And I believe that you can. Uh, So maybe the terms uh, are still kind of fuzzy in terms of precisely what is an agrarian and what is an industrial society. Is an industrial society uh, more a removal of the individual from nature itself? but uses resources that come out of nature, whether it is minerals or uh, timber or farm products, and then uh, treating it in a certain way that it becomes an industrial product. So that corn, basically an agrarian product, can be industrialized uh, as well as soybean and other food products. Okay, Uh, just my meandering thoughts about uh, those issues. Telephone number here is 524-1080. This is a a discussion, and uh, so we do meander. And if you'd like to meander with me, uh, give me a call and join our discussion. Aloha caller, welcome to the program. Poka. Yeah, she's right. I can barely hear you on, when I'm on the phone with you. I see. But um, thank you for the meandering. You keep our minds limber. <laughs> thank you for saying so. Okay, now I have the gang. They're coming in from swimming and they're going to be hungry, so i got to go quickly. But I was listening and there's something you said that I said I can give you some clarification for. It. Okay. The industrial agriculture you're talking about, mm-hmm. that maybe was the case 100 years ago. Now what we're looking at is corporate agriculture. And it's a totally different creature entirely hmm. from even industrial agriculture. Okay, uh, that's you interesting. Know, the yeah. whole thing of corporate culture, yeah, the idea of um, things are done um, sort of on a stepping way with the one above you stepping on you kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. And um, everything um, supports the level on top. So everyone's mm. invested in keeping things as they are. Okay. So there really isn't any opportunity for improvement unless it's going to be something that's going to enhance the bottom line in terms of dollars. Because there's more to success than just money. There's, are the people happy? Are you harming the mm. environment? Mm-hmm. Are you benefiting the community? You know, all of that is part, to me, of the bottom line. So when your bottom line is just dollars, yes, that kind of skews everything, you know? Okay. Hey, can't you have a bottom line of just dollars, even if you follow an agricultural uh, economy or agricultural basis of your economy? Uh, be- because you take, uh, what is that, some of these major agricultural uh, companies like, uh, and now I'm trying to think of one or two, uh, the banana folks, Chiquita Banana. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, are, are they really corporate, industrial, or agricultural? Because their bottom line is not the educational status of the community or the value of artistry and music in the community. But the bottom line, and notwithstanding the fact that they have this uh, uh, Mexican person dressed up with a sombrero and happily picking corn or picking bananas, (laughs) but the bottom line is the uh, profit margin. Uh, so, are these terms merely distraction for us? Uh, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. You hit it. And all these little characters, these little, uh, um, <laughs> what do they call them? Not ideograms, but the, the, the image that we yes. associate, whether it's Charlie Tuna or, mm-hmm. or the Chiquita ba- Banana Girl or, or the, the, 
the coffee, the Sancho Pancho guy picking yeah. coffee on a mountaintop, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, those are all Madison Avenue mm, uh, creations. You know, yeah. creations, exactly. Yeah. And they're just, they're, you know, look at television in the evenings between about 7 and 9, mm -hmm. and you can get the best ideas of how to market your product. Hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. Because that's what people are going to, you know, like, um, get the emotional hook to. I mean, to me, if I could do it, mm. I would tell parents right now, if I could go back in time, one thing I would change with my kids, mm -hmm. no TV. Mm. I mean, no TV. Maybe yeah. a movie I would bring, but not TV and not mm. access to commercial television at all. And, and yet, many of us as parents are so locked into it. Exactly. That uh, it's, we it's do very it without difficult. even knowing it lots of times. And even those of us who do know it, we still, you know, you can catch yourself or somebody, a friend says, hey, you are getting this, or, mm -hmm. or you're, you're mm -hmm. buying into that, or you're telling your kids this. And I'm like, oh my goodness, I was. I, <laughs> I totally saw it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's really bad. And, you know, it just seems to me as though. When it comes to food, mm -hmm. and we're talking agriculture, mm -hmm. we're talking a living entity. We're talking a living entity that we remove from its environment. Mm -hmm. From that point on, it starts to die. It would be dying if we left it on the vine anyway, because yeah. by nature, yeah. it will go to a space where it, you know, goes to seed and, mm -hmm. and just shrivels up, dies, but it, it gives off, you know, what's going to be the new cakeies. Mm -hmm. But if we take it from the plant, it begins to die. So there's a, a, what do they call that, like an arc of how on a, on a plot, if you plotted it, yeah. of when it's still viable, uh, when it's still uh -huh. edible, stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Now, corporations want to maximize that, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's where they come in and they put in the chemicals that will extend the shelf uh, life uh. of the item. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay, and if you look at simply um, like a box of macaroni and cheese yeah. on your shelf right Right now, mm. you think, hey, we ate this all the time. Hey, if you could get a box from 1972 when the Brady Bunch was on TV, mm -hmm. and we ate that macaroni and cheese, you look at the ingredient panel, and there's like an extra two inches wow. of what's being added <laughs> to, to that macaroni and cheese so yeah. that'll stay on the shelf longer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, you know, my, my question to you. Uh -huh. One... One suggestion uh -huh, uh -huh. of how we should change the way we raise children to have an impact on the substantial change in the society, the change in the uh, The one thing, if there, yeah. were, if, if there was one thing, and mm -hmm. obviously no problem is boiled down to just one thing, yeah? Mm -hmm. Not when it's a complex problem. But the one thing that I would vote for, and I encourage my kids to do with my mo'opuna, mm. is the TV. Don't let them just watch TV. Okay. That's, that's like this insidious thing that's mm. making it inroads and putting in ideas yeah. that, you know, oh, no. Okay. Television yeah. and and advertisements in general, the television specifically. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for your call. Take care. Take care of the kids. Aloha. Oh, no, see, be la, oh, okay, can I? 